harvest time here and uh, sense the presence of God. The first time we came here when Pastor Jerry brought us a couple of weeks ago, I just looked at where the church was and felt the Lord speaking to me. And I had a look around and uh, you are the upper room and you are above a garage that says exporters and importers and there's something which God is doing in the spirit he's going to export from here the word of God out to the nations and you're importing people from the nations who are getting filled and renewed and quickened by his spirit I saw another label outside it said lion training dancing and it is it's the lion of the tribe of Judah and he reigns and rules and it's the Holy Ghost who's going to set your feet to dancing this place is rocking and it's going to rock more and more to the praise of his glory Amen let's read the word of God and uh, it's Psalm 107 and the first 32 verses. Psalm 107. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say this. Those he redeemed from the hand of the foe. Those he gathered from the lands from east and west, from north and south. Some wandered in desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Some sat in darkness and the deepest gloom prisoners suffering in iron chains, for they had rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High. So he subjected them to bitter labour, they stumbled and there was no one to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness and the deepest gloom and broke away their chains. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. For he breaks down gates of bronze and cuts through bars of iron. Some became fools through their rebellious ways and suffered affliction because of their iniquities. They loathed all food and drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. Let them sacrifice thank offerings and tell of his works with songs of joy. Others went out on the sea in ships. They were merchants on the mighty waters. They saw the works of the Lord his wonderful deeds in the deep. For he spoke and stirred up a tempest that lifted high the waves. They mounted up to the heavens and went down to the depths. 
In their peril, their courage melted away. They reeled and staggered like drunken men. They were at their wits' end. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out of their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper. The waves of the sea were hushed. They were glad when it grew calm, and he guided them to their desired haven. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. Let them exalt him in the assembly of the people and praise him in the council of the elders. Father, we thank you for your holy word we ask this morning for that teaching anointing which yes. breaks the yoke of ignorance. We ask, Father, for that prophetic edge which speaks the living word straight from Holy Spirit into our spirits that we might be like the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Father, send your word and heal us all, body, soul, and spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before I was a Christian, I used to wonder this. If Christianity is true, why are not all Christians obviously so much nicer than all non-Christians. I used to think, well, if a person is a Christian, but there's no outward visible improvement in their life, if they're just as snobbish or spiteful or disagreeable as before they were a Christian, I used to wonder, is their conversion imaginary? The great American preacher, Tony Campolo, he tells this story. He says, a woman once told him that he wasn't much of a Christian because she knew non-Christians who lived better lives than he did. So Tony Campolo replied, if those people are so wonderful without Jesus, can you imagine how much more wonderful they would be with Jesus? And then he added, if I am as rotten as you suspect I am with Jesus, can you imagine what I'd be like without Jesus? C.S. Lewis said this, Is Christianity something that nasty people need and nice people can afford to do without? Well, the truth is we're all warped. We are all unbalanced and eccentric to a greater or lesser degree. Everybody's normal till you get to know them. <laughs> Sin has bent us. And there's no point in being offended.